Hey guys, it's Kim, aka Spartan Stitcher on Instagram, and I am back again with another weekly cross stitching update. This is video number 77, and today is the 13th of July, 2020. Tomorrow is the given hatch day that I gave Hopper. I don't know exactly when he was hatched, but approximately it was in July of 2001, which means he'll be 19 years old tomorrow. Um, which is still pretty darn young for an Amazon. They can live in captivity easily to uh, 40s, 50s. And recently I found one on Instagram that was 80 years old. Now he's blind in one eye and deaf in one ear, but uh, he's still going pretty strong with quite a bit of personality at 80 years old. So Hopper is going to be 19, um, and he's been with us since... Uh, June of 2004, so um, 16 years with us. So happy hatch day to Hopper tomorrow. This week I worked on four different whips. So first of all, I showed you where I was going to start working on O oh Baby for uh, Full Coverage Fanatics Bingo. I needed to get um, a thousand stitches to finish the park, but 2,000 for the bingo square. Um, so that's what I did. I finished Olympic National Park, so I now uh, have 16 out of 25 parks done. And here are 2,000 more 10 stitches into OBB. So that's the top of it. And working more on that side of his face. I'll bring it up closer. Gotta fold this really thick part. Um, so there you go. You can kind of see where the, the side of his face, this line right here is going to be the side of his face and then it's going to go back to his neck. So, um, I have now met all my goals on this piece for this year. I, I finished row two, which I wanted to, and I have also finished the park that I was doing. So I did two parks on this piece for 2020, which means... I don't know if I'll pick it back up this year. I do. Um, this is the one I want to finish next year. So like I'm trying to finish Macintosh Mill this year. Next year is going to be O Baby. Um, so maybe depending on how my goals go on the rest of my full coverage pieces for the rest of the year, maybe this will come back. Maybe it won't. I'm really unsure. Um, so that was 2000 on O Baby. And then I picked up Trick or Treat. Um, and I kind of misspoke last time. So when I last worked on this piece, I think it was in April, I had finished a row of pages because I'm doing it extreme cross country, all the black first. I had um, finished a park, but I had only a few hundred stitches to uh, finish the row. So I started another park just to get the row finish, which was just under 400 stitches. So for the park I have in work on this one, it had 400 stitches towards the park, which means I can get, you know, going a little bit over what I need for the park, 8,010 stitches or four bingo squares. Uh, so this week I did 4,010 stitches for two bingo squares. And I started on this side and I'm now on this uh, third story of the spooky house. So you'll see the tree branches and some of the roof line and the shutters on the window. Um, so 4,010 stitches. I have 4,000 more to go. So I did not take it apart because it is not a row finish yet. Um, but there you go. I've got the fabric really loose right now. Hold on. Because I always store it loose so it doesn't stretch my fabric. So started right here, there's the bottom of the page, and all of this going across, 4,000 tent stitches, and here's about this area and up where I was working. Um, so now we, we start bringing in this tree and all the big branches coming across, plus the roof line and, and other things. So I will pick this back up this week, and, and as I show you my bingo board, you'll understand why. But um, I'm only halfway done with this piece for bingo. So that was 4,010 stitches. Those were for the squares. I'll, I'll show you those which squares those were for. 
Um, and let's see, I finished that Saturday, um, but I still had time in the evening to stitch. So for the rest of Saturday and into yesterday on Sunday, um, I had already started working on a square for Macintosh Mail because, you know, I want to get this piece done this year. So uh, I continued working on this one and I finished that square because uh, Macintosh Mill is a mix of full cross and half cross. So I do everything in uh, full cross equivalents. So now for the month of July, I have done 1,000 equivalent full cross stitches. I did have to move my Q-snap a little bit just to get better access to the people here and the ground around them. Um, but I have done... Again, I'm still working on mostly this side. So I've done a whole lot of grass, uh, some of the, the dirt here and the dirt path going up to the tavern. And all this dirt and grass are half stitch. Um, I finished the people right here. And I finished the driver of the carriage. And then the baskets of apples are full cross, but the actual baskets are half. Um, yeah, so. Doing all the half stitch really makes it fill up easily and nicely, quickly rather. Um, and I will work more on this one this week. Again, when I show you the bingo board, you'll, you'll see why. Um, and because I finished that right before the girls went to bed last night, I was like, okay, next what do I work on just for last night uh, for bingo? And I pulled out Friends Forever because this is the only square I need left for my first bingo line. I'm doing this one for dragons, obviously. Um, this one I only needed, I'm only doing the one bingo square. I don't, I don't remember how many stitches I needed for the park, but the one bingo square will get me the park finish. Um, so I gritted it last night and I started on the black. I only did uh, just over 300 black stitches. But what's exciting about this page, once I get down to this section right here, that's going to be the, like a third of her head is going to be right here on this page. So we get to see her little dragon crown diadem thing and um, part of her face will be on this page. So, But then we have all the confetti of the carved wooden throne. So... I will continue to work on this one to get my 2,000 stitches for the bingo square. And let me show you my board so you can understand where I'm at. So the, the squares outlined in orange are complete. So trick or treat was sweet treats and also the Halloween theme. Oh baby is the design that starts with a vowel. Uh, here's going to be my dragons for friends forever. So I'll have my first bingo. Um, and then this is one I did the previous week uh, for humans. I worked on half-lip prints. So um, the square I finished yesterday on Macintosh Mill was for landscape. And so the second line I'm going to go for is this one right here. So I do not have to reaccomplish this square. I've already done it once. And then this one is mode of transportation. Well, Macintosh Mill has a carriage. That's a mode of transportation. Um, dog or cat. There's cats in Trick or Treat. And geometric shape. There are um, quite a few different geometric shapes in Trick or Treat. There's the round moon, round windows, spherical pumpkins, you know, you name it. There's, there's uh, geometric shapes. So this line, because I've already done the square, it's two squares on Macintosh Mill and two squares on Trick or Treat. So that's going to be my focus this week. Um, so finish Friends Forever for this line, work on Macintosh Mill, Trick or Treat, and I can't forget that even with all this full coverage, I still need to do my weekly stitches or monthly stitches on Big Red Ship of Life by Ink Circles. So we'll see if I pull that one out this weekend. Like I want to work on everything. I want to get my parks done, my bingo lines, but also keep on my personal goals um, for Big Red Ship. So that's what I think I'm going to work on this week. 
Um, the other thing I got in the mail, my stitchy friend from Colorado, she is no longer stitching on 32 count. Um, so she is de-stashing some of her things to uh, various friends. And she sent me a picture and said, which, which fabrics do you want? So I picked out a few. Um, they're all picture this plus, And I have only used one of these colors in person. So this one is Gossamer in 32 count Belfast. Nice little pale green. Um, the yellow in it is not that bright, but it is a pretty model. Uh, yellow and green. You're seeing some blue almost, but there's no blue in it. So yellow and green Gossamer. This piece is 13 by 18. And I have Dubloon 20 by 13 in a 32 count Belfast. I've never used Dubloon before, but I know a lot of people like it. Um, so I have that one. You guys know that I prefer uh, Lugana to linen, but that doesn't mean I never stitch on linen. So, and plus linen dyes differently than Lugana. So some of these, like the color that I have used before, I pretty sure I did it on Lugana. So it looks a little bit different in the linen. Um, this one is Lugana, 32 count Cyprium. Um, so nice color there, some modeling. I'm looking forward to finding pieces to match these up with. And the color I've used before, this is Eek, 30, 32 count Belfast. This is a big piece, 18 by 27. So this is um, a piece that a lot of people use in Halloween designs because it is orange and black or orange and gray. Um, the one design I've used on it so far was not a Halloween design, it was a dragon. For my daughter's room, one of the uh, dragon wing designs tribal looking type dragons and I used um, $37.99 to stitch it so it, it went really well with the the grayish black modeling in it so I like Eek. So thank you to my stitching friend for that. I know she watches my videos um, and you know we all share the love. Matter of fact Anne of Fiber Floss and Fiction Podcast we were talking this past week um, about setting a benefactor for our stash, if you will, you know, being not really morbid, but you know how much your whips and your stash means to you. Do, do your loved ones, loved ones know who to contact if something happens to you to make sure that your whips in your stash go to someone who can take care of it, whether they keep it for themselves or they find good loving homes for it. Um, Anne already said that she actually had recently had the conversation with her husband that um, one of her friends, you know, call this friend for all her yarn stash and then call me and uh, send me all her stitching stash because she know I'd find it all a good home, whatever I don't keep myself. Um, so that was really funny. Uh, her husband is a uh, fellow Spartan, so pretty sure he is anyways, lest I remembered. Um, so it was it was interesting. Now for me, I don't know if my daughters are gonna ever be interested in cross stitch. They they're interested in what I'm making, um, but they haven't wanted to learn yet. Um, so we'll see if my stash ever goes to a friend or if it goes to my family. But I always like the feeling of uh, or the um, imagining my funeral with not only pictures of me at the funeral that people can enjoy, but my whips and my finished pieces displayed around the room where they can uh, see different things that I've created. So that's just me, but um, something to think about while you're uh, keeping your social distance. Uh, another interesting thing, I have used an entire skein of 310 this week both in, uh, mostly in, in Trick or Treat, but the little bit that I did last night in uh, Friends Forever. I finished up an entire skein, but never fear, I've got a gigantic cone, so I just need to refill my bobbin. Um, that's all my stitching content. I do, I've got some horse pictures next, 
um, kind of stitching related. But uh, update on Cosmo, who is the uh, quarter horse and um, Oldenburg foal at my friend's place that uh, is taking care of Spencer. So as a reminder, here's Cosmo when he was less than a week old. So look at the the color shade that he is there. Okay, so Cosmo is now a month and a half old and he is starting to shed his foal coat and they always uh, start shedding first around their eyeballs which makes them look really funny when you're looking at him. But look how dark he's gonna be. Now keep in mind that you know the the foal coat has sun bleached a little bit in his time outside. So he was a little bit darker than this when he was born. But he's almost, he could probably be a liver chestnut. Um, we'll see when, when he completely sheds out. Which, you know, got me interested and I had to do this. Especially when my friend sent me this picture. Or posted this picture. I did a comparison shot between Cosmo and Oh Baby. Because they're both foals looking through the fence. So you can see he looks a little funny with his little dark eye, dark eyeballs. Um, but yeah, so this, this now, obviously their markings are different, but he might just end up this dark. So, because that is a liver chestnut. So we shall see. He's a little, uh, he's, he's a little spicy like any red horse. So, and let's see, anything else? I don't have any Air Force stories, and I know I haven't told you any recently. Um, it's pretty much because I've been telling stories since my husband deployed eight months ago, and I'm running out of stories to tell you guys, at least until I remember up other stories that, you know, are deep in my brain. So whenever I come up with more stories, I will let you know and uh, share those stories with you. Or if anything that my husband is doing um, becomes interesting. He actually goes into work tomorrow to start in-processing from his deployment. And that could take one or two days. And then he starts his um, R&R time. So we'll have more time to go do things. And this time he can actually go out and uh, wear, you know, wearing our mask and all do things and actually be around people. So, uh... I hope everybody has a good stitching week. I'm trying to think of anything, if there was anything else. No. Nope. Alright guys, have a good stitching week and we shall see you later. Bye.